I'm Staff Sergeant Jordan Perez. I'm a platoon sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, we're in Camp San Mateo and Camp Pendleton. Uh, we're going to be doing a Muay Thai seminar uh, with a bunch of the Marines that we're going to get after it. Here to have some fun, man, to train some Marines and to uh, kind of give back and yeah, enjoy enjoy our time, but teach some valuable lessons and uh, hopefully it's something that can be applicable and, and used. I'm just here to grind on dudes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> My name is Julian. I own a Muay Thai team based out of Covina, California. Uh, this is Rob, one of our active fighters, and this is Brandon. He also trains, uh, he does a lot of jujitsu, and uh, he's gonna be filming this today, just kind of gauging your guys' ability from when you start to kind of see how you guys finish by the, the two hour mark, how much you guys have learned, kind of documenting the whole process, all right? So real quickly, we're gonna go over Muay Thai, right? I think Muay Thai for you guys is a great martial art to learn. If you guys learn Muay Thai, if you guys happen to lose your weapons in combat, it is one of the best martial arts that you can have in order to finish opponents, right? Let's talk about when, when it was created hundreds of years ago, if you were dehorsed or you lost your weapon in war, they needed to have a way to finish opponents. You're not gonna tap right someone out. You're 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 not gonna try to submit someone when when things are on the line like that. You need to finish someone, right? So we want to give you guys the tools to be able to do that, to use your punches, to use your elbows, to use your knees, to use your kicks, and to be able to to um, use your range, right? To try to mitigate mitigate uh, risk. Right? That's essentially what we're trying to do. So learning how to use your limbs for your proportion, because all you guys are different, right? Some of you guys are tall, some of you guys are shorter, some of you guys are stockier, some of you guys are longer. It just depends. There's different styles of Muay Thai. So real, real quickly, we'll recap some of the styles. The first style we have is Muay Mat. Muay Mat is a heavy puncher. They like to throw a lot of boxing and they like to chop the leg, right? So do you guys, does anyone here actually watch like Muay Thai Muay Thai? Or do you guys watch like UFC? Do you guys watch, um, mixed martial arts, one championship, right? So from some of those things, you'll see influences of Muay Thai for sure, especially in the strikers, the really good ones, a lot of them come from Muay Thai backgrounds, right? So first style, Muay Ma, heavy puncher, throwing a lot of low kicks, legs, right? So that's a good way to take away your opponent's movement. If you chop the legs, take away their legs, they can't move the same, right? So second style is Muay Te. Muay Te, Te stands for kick, Ma stands for punch, right? So. They're using a lot of round kicks and they're using a lot of push kicks, a lot of teeps, right? So inside the leg, outside the leg, lead leg, back leg, body, head, they just use a lot of kicks. So they like to fight nice and long. Third style, Muay Cao. Muay Cao is a pressure fighter. They have to have a really good gas tank. You have to have incredible cardio because you step on the gas harder every single round. You go forward. They only have one direction, it's forward. They use a lot of elbows. Cao stands for knee, they use a ton of knees. So you grab, they like to clinch. You grab your opponent and you just knee the shit out of them. You don't let them go. So uh, that to me is probably the most grueling style, the hardest style to, to be if you wanna be that style and probably the hardest style to deal with because people, if you're fighting oftentimes, if it's back and forth, it's back and forth. But when someone has constant pressure on you, most people don't fight well going backwards, right? So that's a grueling style. We also have Moi Sok, Moi Sok is the elbow fighter. A lot of times they couple that with Moi Kao. If you guys are going forward and you're in range for knees, the elbows are right there too. So I like to mix those two styles together. And then we have Moi Fi Mu. Moi Fi Mu is a technical style. It's a very beautiful style. If you look at like fighters like San Shai, you look at fighters like Lerd Silla. Rob just did a seminar with Lerd Silla recently. Um, these guys are incredible, super high IQ fighters. They're very slick, they're very effusive. They have very good, very good movement and extremely good footwork and it keeps them from taking a lot of damage. As far as longevity, it's probably the best style because they take so little damage, they just make you miss and they make you pay, All right? So these are kind of things to think about as we start to train, what style you like and how you kind of wanna fight. But the main things I wanna give you today are things that are gonna be useful for you in actual combat, All right? I want to teach you guys how to finish people. So first thing, let's go ahead and start with the group warm up. Let's get the, let's get the blood flowing and then, um, We'll do a bit of core. You definitely need a strong core for Muay Thai. Like, again, we can condition, right? Our legs, we can condition our bodies. The one thing that we can't condition is our brain, right? So in sparring, a lot of times, the Western philosophy is we spar super hard here. 
A lot of these guys are giving each other CTE and damage here. But if you look at the average MMA fighter in America's career, maybe 40, 50 fights. And we go, damn, that's a lot of fights. That's a little kid in Thailand. In Thailand, I know little kids, like literally 10 years old, that have 40 fights. Like a full-blown, like 30-year-old, 40-year-old dude's full, full career here. Like those are rookie numbers. They have hundreds of fights. The guy that he just did a seminar with, Lord Silla, was 100-0 in Muay Thai. Like he has 300 plus fights, he went 100 and 0, that's like unheard of in Muay Thai. So the way that they do that is they don't beat the shit out of each other in training, especially because it's, it's from a different perspective. Like they use this to, um, this is how they make money, this is how they make a living, right? From, from a very young age, they're, they're given a choice at four or five years old, they're making life choices. Their parents say, we got a little bit of money. You can either go to school or you can go to the gym. And if they choose Muay Thai, they're shipped off to the gym they go there, their parents pay for them, and they train. So by the time they're seven, eight years old, they start competing in Muay Thai. At that point, they're making money. They make, they make you know, a few hundred baht per fight, which is super cheap. 300 baht per fight I've seen kids fight for out there that I, that I personally was there and like worked with and helped train. 300 baht is like $9. It's absolutely nuts like what these, what these people fight for. But it's the only way they could do it is they just fight and fight and fight. And the only way they could get so many fights is if they're not getting hurt in training. So we gotta be cautious. So when we train, we hit the pads hard. We hit the bags hard. But when we hit each other, we definitely pull shots to the face, to the chin, to the nose, to the head. And the body, we can hit a little bit harder. The legs, we can hit a little bit harder because those things we can condition and we can use the conditioning on those things, right? The only way to condition them is to get them hit or kicked, right? All right, so let's start with a little warm up. So everyone go ahead and get a space on the mat, come away from the walls. All right, so we're just gonna go a few minutes. First thing we're gonna start off with is jumping jacks. You guys ready? All right, let's go. say would be distance distance management and I'm sure you guys all know how to throw a jab yeah so yeah. jab pretty basic so the one that I really want you to uh, get instilled in you is the teep so push kick so it's the jab with the foot right so when I throw a push kick there's four movements right it's not like think the swing kicks that we did to warm up it's not a swing kick right it's a lifting so first step is up Second step is push, drive, then I bring it back in and then down. So one, two, three, four, right? I don't wanna push and then slide down and fall into some, like an attack from him. I wanna systematically place my foot down when I push kick. So I go here, if I slide, if I fall down, he's gonna throw something for me, either a cross or an elbow or something in my face. So I need to lift, push, pull back, step it down right back into my stance where I wanna be. We should be able to hit the end of our jab. Everything at the end of my jab is powerful, right? If I'm here, that means all my shots are long. My cross is gonna be strong. My right kick is gonna be strong to the leg, to the body, to the head. My right knee is gonna be strong. Everything at the end of my jab is where I wanna keep distance, right? So this is what we talk about distance management. The end of my jab is where I want him to be. I don't wanna be at the end of his jab because the range is gonna be slightly different, right? So from our fight stance, okay? I want you guys to throw one jab and I want your partner to catch it with their jab hand, okay? 
One jab, and from there, I don't want you to switch your feet or anything. I want you to pick up your lead foot and push and put it back down. So I go one jab, one T. He goes one jab, one T. And we're working on the stomach. If it moves you, that's okay. Go back to your stance, but make sure you breathe out when he strikes to your stomach. Just again, get the conditioning to the body, right? So we breathe when we strike and when we receive the strike, we breathe. We breathe out when we strike so that if we get hit in the body, so say he throws something and I slip and I hit the body, that he's at least firm, right? So it, it's he can take more damage that way. He's not gonna get the air pushed out of him when he gets hit, right? And then obviously when I'm getting hit, I wanna make myself as firm as possible. So making sure that you're breathing out when you're hitting, okay? So again, we're gonna one job, one T. Right? There is no switching of the feet to give myself distance, right? There's no pulling back. It's just lift, push, put it back down. Okay? And if it guys, if it helps you too, in Muay Thai we use a sway where we go kind of back and forth, front foot to back foot. This helps us so we're never too uh, heavy on a single foot and I can check, I can block kicks on either side, I can throw on either side. I'm never too um, rooted in one place where I have good movement because I'm always light on my feet. Okay, so if it helps you, go back to this sway back and forth. Lead foot, rear foot, lead foot, rear foot. So when you guys throw the jab, make sure it's a full extension. Right here, okay, so here. You wanna, because we're trying to get uh, a better understanding of our distance. So full extension on the jab. And then just like I told them, when you're doing your teeth, think of it as you racking around back. You're gonna chamber it, chamber the teeth by bringing it up. And throwing your hips out, pushing out, bringing it back. Okay. Let me try. 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 Let me <laughs> so throw your hip into it, all right? So when you bring it up here, boom. You're throwing your hip forward and then bringing it back. Oh, yeah, that would okay. way more sense. So instead of just reaching up there. All right, so go. Yeah. And bring up the knee. Oh, with the hook. Yeah. 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 You want to go there? Oh, sorry, yeah, I see the difference. Yeah. So, bring up the knee. Just be cognizant of your, your, your weight distribution. So when you, threw, you, when you threw your jab, you already put all your weight on your lead leg, and then it's not ideal because then you have to transfer and then teeth, right? So just stay on that back foot here. Boom. 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 Oh. Am I losing my balance? Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was way easier. Oh. Hey, you go. You go. You go. My turn. Oh, this is. I forgot what else. So let, let's slow down a bit. When it comes to the teeth, yeah. make sure that you're, you have a, a solid foundation underneath, right? right? Just like Coach Jules was saying about that, that transfer and that step, right? You want to make sure that when you throw this teeth, your weight's not on there, right? So when you throw your jab, it's a full extension because we want to gauge our distance here, right? Then, and then we bring it up just like we're chambering around here. Push out, back. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Good. Chamber. Slow, slow it down. Be more intentional with that teeth, right? Because you don't want to get sloppy with it. So you bring it up, boom, back.
Yeah. 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 Y
and I whip my leg over and I'm kind of dropping it down. It's a bit heavier. It takes a longer to get there and it's, uh, you're, gonna, you're more likely to see it and to be able to check it. But if you land it, it's gonna do damage, right? So kick number two will look like this. Right, a different angle. It's coming up, then coming down. As opposed to diagonal, right? So I want you guys to practice both varieties of kicks, okay? We're going to their outside lead leg. So if you have someone who's southpaw and someone who's orthodox, switch your stance for each other. So you guys can work on someone that's that stance, okay? So again, one partner holding the kick shield right here, holding it on your leg, yep. So tall, vertical, and then let's go. So when they're kicking to your leg, guys, if you're holding the pad when they're kicking to your leg, do a little squat, like just sit on the kick so they're not destroying your leg because you're going to start to feel it after it kicks, even through the pad. A little squat every time you kick. Okay, so let's practice first that direct line kick, that diagonal kick, A to B. Just try to get it fast and then get back to your fight stance right away. Face him a little. Realistically, realistically, what we're aiming for is. So right now we're just going to practice the angle. So straight, eight point here. So okay. Trying to swing it, just a diagonal one, so point A to point B, so it's going to be here, boom. Okay. okay. So don't don't worry about pushing it up and then dropping it. Okay. Right now it's just the diagonal. Okay. But try, try to keep your stance right now. This is the So not that direct diagonal kick, but get that lift. The hips have to turn over, right? So this is the secret for our kicks. If my foot doesn't pivot, then my kick is no good, right? Because my hips aren't opening up. And it's gonna, it's not only gonna be ineffective, it's gonna like look goofy. It doesn't look right. If I try to kick someone and my, my left leg or my balance like stays pointing at them, I can't hit them with the proper front part of my shin, right? When we're hitting with the leg, we wanna hit with the bottom portion of the shin. When we're blocking the checks, like blocking the kicks with the check, top portion of our shin, right? So if I try to kick him and I don't pivot that foot, right? I'm hitting like with the side of my ankle, right? So I need to make sure that that foot pivots. Otherwise, I can't hit with the proper part. So it's all about that lead foot pivoting for the kick. All the way around. So try to pivot as much as you can and stay on the ball of the foot. And then it's also about where you're returning. So you might have a good kick, but if you do this, when you stand there in front of them with your hands down, what are they going to do? Punch you in the mouth. Yeah, punch you in the mouth for sure, right? So let's make sure that we get back to our stance as soon as we're done. And we're back to our stance, nice and relaxed. And in between your guys' strikes, stay relaxed. If you guys are tense for two hours a session, like it's gonna be a long session. You're gonna be really, really tired. So everything in between, relaxed. So think relaxed, nice and calm. If someone, if I fight someone and they're super tense, I can see everything they do a minute before they do it because they're so robotic and stiff with everything that they do, it's just telegraphed. I'd rather you guys be nice and light and I don't know what you're gonna do. Bah, sh -bah. Only uh, tense at the end of your shots. Like think of a whip cracking. That's how all your shots should be. It should be like a whip. That's what makes, uh, it gives people brain damage. Like it makes them concuss. It makes their heads rattle because you make it snap. It's not about how hard you throw that punch. 
It's about how you make it snap and how quickly you pull it back, right? If I throw a punch, but I push and I don't ever bring it back, it's not gonna be as strong as if I rack it, like shoot it and yank it back. Like think of, the, think of a slide on your, on, your, on your firearm. The slide fires and pulls back super quick, right? Same exact motion, boom, boom, pull it back. Same thing with your kick, pull it back and then back to your stance and then relax, relax. That's your time to like get your breath and breathe and catch up on rest, right? So uh, a lot of it is your breath control. So make sure you're breathing on your strikes uh, and make sure that you're also, again, not being stiff the whole time, only on the kick. And then relax, relax. All right, let's go. So we'll go uh, nice strong kick on this one, lift that leg up, turn it over, and then we'll, we'll flip it over and we'll let your partner go. Yeah. Oh, you're going like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you're... So first, knee initiates the movement. Yeah, and then just bring the shoulder across. Kind of like right now. Yeah, just don't, don't overthink it. Just here, just nice and loose, nice and loose, coming up. Oh. Don't worry about the power. The power will come later. Don't worry about the technique. Here. Okay. Gotcha. So, knee, knee initiates the movement. It's gonna come up. Oh. Because if I start kicking out here, I start telegraphing that movement, right? And it's going to be easy to read. So it's going to go up and over. Up and over. Okay. With the knee. Yeah. Grab shin guards. If you guys want some water real quick, grab some water. But everyone gloves and shin guards. So when we do this, we're using our shin, right? Shin to shin. If we're fighting and someone kicks me on the thigh, right? They're not gonna feel it too much, but I guarantee you I will feel it, right? And vice versa. If they go to kick me and I check and I block with my shin and we go shin to shin, I'm gonna feel it still, but so are they, right? And it's, it's typically gonna make them think twice. Let's say they go to kick me a few times and the first three times they go to kick me, I block all three. I guarantee they're probably gonna lighten up on the leg kicks. They're gonna be like, damn, okay, this guy's, he's pretty gone on it with the kicks. Like that's not working, I gotta figure something else out. That shin to shin makes a big difference, right? So make sure that we're not eating the kicks that if we're gonna be in pain, at least they're gonna be in pain too right? We're going to be structured. And again, it's not going to take away our movement the same way that if they start cutting into our quads is going to take our movement away, right? So when we go to kick the legs, we're not kicking the same that we were on the pads right now. Right now we were really trying to blast the kicks to learn the technique and to put some power into it. When we're doing this with our partners, we're not trying to destroy them. We just want to have a uh, good technique while we do this. Okay. So this is more so for the person checking, but the person kicking should be trying to demonstrate good technique. So we're starting with that hand up. I'm gonna go one kick to his lead leg, same like we just practiced. I can go kick one or kick two, right? I can go quick or I can go big. Either way, he's blocking. Then he's gonna do two kicks to me. So I'll go one and I check, two and I check, right? So in Muay Thai, like when we're talking about competitive, for sport, it's a little bit different. If he kicks me and I check, but I move, he unbalances me, he still gets that point, right? For combat, it's a little bit different. I don't care if you move, but you're obviously trying to be sturdy, um, but you know, a check is a check. I'd rather you check than just get taken, taking the kick on the leg, right? So try to be as stable as you can. I kick, boom, wall, right? We're making a wall. I'm not letting that check bend, so my foot isn't flat. There's argument whether toes down or toes up is better on your check. I don't care as long as you block with your shin, okay? Toes down, toes up, doesn't really matter. But the leg isn't bent. The leg is vertical, the bottom half of the leg. It's a wall, right? So when he kicks, and even if he rips a kick, strong. I'm still right here. It's just right there, a wall, okay? So try to have good balance. I kick, okay? 
But again, we're not trying to blast it the same way we're tr trying to blast the pads. This is more so so you guys can develop the habit of getting that leg up and blocking the kick. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So let's go back and forth. Two kicks for two kicks. Okay, so using your rear leg to kick to their lead leg. All right, let's go. Okay, listen now, when you're throwing these kicks, you're going for their thigh, okay? So make sure when, if you're checking it, you're bringing it up. Don't be lazy with it, kind of just like let it just chill down here, right? Also, when we check, we're not checking to our center to our, this is our battle line, I'm not lifting my checks to my center line, right? If I lift my checks to my center line, look what happens when I check to the center line and he throws a strong kick. He's gonna spin me around. Right? I'm not going to be balanced. So I'm checking out, checking out to a 45 degree angle on either side. He goes lead leg, he kicks to my rear leg. I'm just checking out 45s, wall, wall. Not to my center leg. Okay, so uh, real quickly, uh, drop the shoe. So we worked on the lead leg check, right? The lead leg is what's the most viable option for you guys to attack because it's closer to you, right? Just simple. If they attack to my rear leg, it's the same thing. I can check on the outside. If they attack to the inside of my leg, I just bring this across. This is called the cross check, cross check. Let's say I'm in my sway and I happen to be at the front of my sway when he chops to my lead leg. My weight is on this leg, so I obviously I can't lift that leg up off the ground because the majority of my weight is here. I would use my back leg and cross check and bring it across. Okay. Same thing if I'm at the back of my sway and he kicks to my back leg, I bring that shin across. It's kind of like a little last ditch effort just to save and then you can return from there. Right, so now next portion, let's go to thinking about our power side, right? So for some of you, it's gonna be right side. For some of you, it's gonna be left side. Let's start real quick with the cross, right? The cross is just super fundamental. You guys need to have a good cross. You guys need to develop that cross. When you throw the cross, make sure that you guys are extending. So when I throw my cross, a lot of the common mistakes that I see is, uh, the, the, the main one is dropping the lead hand. So when I go to throw this cross, my left hand shouldn't be dropping to my chest or my waist, right? It should stay up. My back foot should be pivoting, right? I shouldn't stay here. I should use my hip to drive. Everything starts at the feet, right? So I need to get my back foot, pivot. I go onto my toe, my knee, my foot, my toes. Everything should be lined up, hitting in alignment straight and my left hand should stay up. So when you guys are holding this, let's work real quickly on just throwing a nice strong cross. Itch, itch, itch. Remember, I'm not pushing, right? I'm making it snap, right? And I'm trying to extend that arm. Itch. Itch. Left hand isn't dropping, right? Left hand is staying up. Itch. And then I'm relaxed. I only tense on the strike and I think about what can come back to me, right? So when you guys actually start to spar and move around, it's important that you guys are relaxed, that you guys don't just hit and then you're like, all right, cool, it's your turn. And when we fight, it's gotta be a selfish thing, especially for combat, especially for sport. It's not a you go, I go thing. It's I go, I go, I go, right? So again, everything in alignment, turning that over, extending, everything should, pointing, it should be pointing in the same direction, okay? Itch. Itch. Nice strong cross, let's work that cross, let's go. Oh. If I need to move, I'm sliding my rear foot forward, or my rear, yeah, I'm sliding my rear foot forward here this way to get the distance rather than me kind of overextending above my lead leg because if I get this kick, so now let's talk about my favorite part elbows i love fighting with elbows right so um again now this is we're getting into closer range fighting we transitioned from the long range now we went to the knees right um the kicks were just for reps and then for this one let's go uh, 
You know what, let's go both sides open. When we learn elbows, I think it's oftentimes a lot easier to learn them without gloves because it really forces us to look at the hand positioning. So whenever I'm throwing elbows, I want to make sure that my hands are open at all times. I don't make a fist. This makes my elbows more rigid and stiff. This allows my elbows to flow. We have different types of elbows, right? We have uh, slicing or slashing elbows, and then we have high impact like spearing and ramming elbows, right? So most of what you're gonna see a lot of the times is slashing, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cut my opponent, right? I'm trying to make him bleed. Um, and there's certain spots that I attack. So I don't attack like the cheeks, right? There's the, the skin there is different than if I attack the bridge of the nose or anywhere around the eyes, right? Between the eyes, above the eyebrows or under the eyes, the skin is tight and there's bone right behind it, right? The lips are okay because you got teeth behind them. So knock someone's teeth out or split their lips open, right? But there's certain specific spots that I aim for that I know are gonna cut better than others, right? So when I throw elbows, Hands open, loose, and relaxed. First, we're gonna go over our slashing or slicing elbows. Uh, the first ones that we have are the up or rising elbows. So when I throw these elbows, my hands should be high. Remember how I talked about distance? If I'm here, I can be a little bit more relaxed. Hands lower, the closer that I get, the closer my hands get to me and the higher up on me they get. So this is my elbow range in here. In here, this is where I start working my magic. I like elbows, right? So slashing elbow, I follow through. I raise my hand, open palm, and I, it's almost like you're combing your hair back and I follow through. I don't just hit to here, I follow it through and then I'll pull it back down. So rising elbow one on your rear, rising elbow two. One, two, one, two. Okay, when I do my elbow again, just like I throw my cross or my jab, my opposite hand doesn't drop. Okay, that leaves me wide open for a counter elbow or a shot or a punch, right? So if we trade elbows, I wanna be making sure that I'm, uh, in the advantage of the trade. So meaning, if he throws an elbow with his hand down, so let's say he throws left elbow, and we go to throw left elbow, so go horizontal, and he throws it with his hand down, below his chin, my hand's up, and I throw the same exact elbow, mine's gonna land, and his is not, his is gonna hit into my guard, right? So when we throw those elbows, again, hands open, loose, and relaxed. So we're gonna go rising elbow, rising elbow. Okay, notice that when, my, when I throw my cross, I pivot my foot, same thing for my rising elbow. I follow it through, I pivot. Then we're gonna go horizontal, straight across. So left elbow, the palm opens out, okay? Palm opens out, goes to the center of your chest, okay, to your sternum, okay? It doesn't have to touch, but that's exact, that's uh, around the area that you want it to be. And you wanna pivot it. Same thing on the right side, but left hand stays up. Now I pivot, everything on my right side, I pivot just like my cross. Nice slice through. Again, if we're shifted over, like if this is our battle line, right? And I'm over here and I'm trying to throw a right elbow, it's not gonna hit where I want it to hit because my battle line's fucked up, right? I'm not on, on stance where I need to be. I wanna be here so everything lands to my center line. Up, up, horizontal, horizontal, arcing, arcing, right? We got push, we got spear, we got ramasoon, tomahawk elbow, right? We have suitcase elbows and we have spinning elbows, but we're gonna go over just the handful of ones that are not so uh, advanced that are easier for you to grasp and the ones that ideally you guys could use in battle, right? So I think the slashes are the, the ideal ones and then we're gonna go over some bludgeoning ones as well, right? So um, horizontal, straight across, right? And then the third set, slashing, we're gonna go diag or arcing. So we lift it up and we slice down. Lift it up and slice down, right? The reason I use some of these elbows more than others is just based on my opponent's guard. My opponent has a good guard, this, it's good for him, but my punches aren't gonna be landing the same, right? Especially with boxing gloves or hands, it's a little bit bigger. The elbow's a smaller profile, all that weight focuses down on one point. So rather than trying to split it with a punch, all you, my elbow will sneak through there where my glove won't. Boom, or I'll split right through that guard. Boom, and then I'll, I'll keep attacking, right? So the up elbows are good for that, the risings, so are the arcings. If his guard's here, I rise and I try to make sure I don't hit the hand because there's no point to throwing it if it's gonna be deflected by the hand. I split that guard from above and I slice down on the forehead or between the eyebrows or the bridge of the nose. All right, so let's work these three sets. Rising, one and two. Horizontal, one and two. And arcing, one and two. All right, so look at the articulation. You lift high, think of like drawing back a bow and then you drop. Oh, okay, you have to have um, a bit of shoulder mobility to do this. If you guys are tight in your shoulders, they're gonna be a little bit harder for you. But you'll see where you're at. You can do exercises to, to help you guys loosen up. 
Okay, so nice, loose, and relaxed. Remember, hands open the whole time. I don't want to see anyone with fists. Hands open, loose, and relaxed the whole time. Ready? Okay, let's go back. Do your set, your three sets, six elbows total, and then let your partner go. So you should be catching with the same hand. If they're throwing left elbow, you're catching left hand. If they're throwing right elbow, you're catching right hand. Hands open. Open. Close them. So even if our gloves, our gloves have us here naturally, right? We squeeze to punch. This is natural. Of course, I'm open. Even in my gloves, they won't get straight, but they'll get to here. Oh shit, you can do that. Elbow, hell yeah. <laughs> throw it down a bit and then don't be don't be so so shy. Just get in there and just throw them light. Just so you're able to see at least your distance, right? Because if you're throwing them here, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to your partner because you guys aren't working that distancing perspective of it. Right? What was he showing you for? So opposite, opposite. So if he throws, if he throws his horizontal, sure, I'm gonna catch it for him right here with mine. So if he throws his right side, I'm gonna catch it with my right side. Shit. Wait, we're, doing, we're doing these ones. Sure. Yeah. So with that catching, what was he saying? So if you throw right, then I catch yeah. with my right? Yeah. Okay. But do it with the right? Um, okay. What's he saying like from with this right? Oh, do it again. Straight up? Do it again? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you just block it kind of okay. like And then yeah, lose so the you momentum. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you want to do, do these ones or this one? Mm. Go to these. Okay. All right. Oh, I'll get off the hand. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm fucking retarded. You're okay. Oh. Alright. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Think about it. You're, you're just gonna fucking drop a hammer on someone's bitch ass, right? So it's here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let me go with my left. Left? Yeah, you go left. Higher. So raise it higher, more dramatically. There you go. Left hand up as you do it. Left hand by your face. There you go. Big throw. Yeah. Elbows super dangerous range, so I want to always have one on my face, just to just to mitigate the risk. Because if I can elbow you, you can elbow me, right? Yes, sir. So let's do this with the hands up for sure. So let's go. Spear. Push, and then for that one, more space between the bicep and the quad. So not so close like the spear, but space between. The Throw it, like a, throw it like you would a cross. Imagine that's this part of your hands not there. Yeah, like that. Spearing straight there. Push it across. Okay, let's see Rama Sweep. So bigger. Raise it like you're going like to throw an axe or like you're going to throw a football. Yeah, and then again, just keep the space between the bicep and the bar. Sure. 
Let's go first one spear, left side. <laughs> Try to bring your back foot with you so you don't stay, you don't get spread, right? So I step, step, so that I keep my battle line. Yeah, there you go. Let's see, push elbow on the right side. Good, left hand by your face. There you go. Space between the forearm and bicep when it lands. There you go, that's much better. Nice. Good, left hand high. Let's see Rama soon. Hand open. Space when it lands. There you go. Left hand up. Left hand up. So hold it when you land. Uh, yeah. So look, if I close it right, look at my elbow. Yeah, I gotta get my point into it. Right, it'll hit tricep, right? which will hurt me if I land it on someone's belly. Versus I bring that elbow forward, opening that space. Okay. Good. Real quick, guys. So look, if I throw that Ramasun like this, when I land it, I'm gonna land with my tricep, right? So the way that I articulate this part of my elbow to get down is I have to make sure that there's space between the bicep and the forearm. Look at my elbow, how it rolls down. Now I'll hit with the proper part. If I throw it this way, I'm just gonna crack him with my tricep. It's gonna hurt me, right? If I throw it this way, the bone rolls forward in proper alignment, and now I'm hitting with the bone. So make sure that there's space between the forearm and the bicep, okay? All right, keep going, keep going. You guys are doing great. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it pushes and when it's on the third one. You see Ramasun? You see Ramasun again? Land it. Land it and hold it on there. Right there. Right. So see the difference between this and this. Yeah. yeah. This one causes that elbow to roll forward, right? So from here, there. So make sure that there's it's, uh, the bone is in proper alignment. It's here. It's going to pull up, and then you're hitting the bottom of your tricep. Let's so roll that forward. Leave that hand open, and then a big, like big. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be good. There you go. Throw it in the left hand by your face. Into yours. Right. So let's go first one, spear. 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 Let's go left side. Just as you're in uh, close so Remember that connection. So put that to your head right here. Boom. Shoulder forward. Right hand up. And then lunge forward like that. Bring that back low with you. Yeah, exactly. All your body that goes to that. Okay. Now this one for the push. Same thing, I want to open it up. Make sure it lands well. Ah, a little bit close. Open it up a little bit more. Space between the bicep and the forearm. There you go, much better. There you go. There you go. Okay, let's see Rama soon. Come on. Mm. Mm, good. Nice. Good job. That's a spear. It's open. My lead. It's open. Oh, oh so that one. Yeah, because that one, if they're rushing you, you can throw, you can throw, or you can actually throw it in so make it a big articulation like if you were about to throw a tomahawk have you been axe throwing you ever yes. done okay so think of axe throwing the same motion so i'll bring it big and wide spear send it Ooh, there you go there you go they look all nasty and then keep your left hand up to protect that side of your face as you do as I go ahead and pivot. So you're coming this way. Camera's on you, look good. Okay, last one, let me see your spear elbow with the lead side there. Right. Stepping forward, impale on. Boom, yeah, right hand up. Right hand by your face. <laughs> there you go. Good. Elbow and man when you try Good, very nice, man, good elbows. Good elbows. All right, let's see yours. Let's start with the spear. Let's start with the left hand. Okay, spear elbow first. <laughs> Yeah. His, his hands. His oh, hands. yeah, yeah, okay. Damn it. Right. Yeah. 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 Right there on the head. Right there. So you have two points of contact. Okay. Lunging forward, right hand protecting the side of your face. And your whole body weight goes into it. So you're lunging forward in that position. 
Anticipated. There you go. Good. Get that hand ready. Can move to the. This is one. I was doing this for you. Oh. I was like, don't fucking like kill my hand. Good. Nice. I don't push on it. Well, you also hit my finger. Great catch. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Like this. So straight forward. So remember that. Point of attachment. Boom. There. And then lunge forward. Oh, oh this one. Yeah. Okay. Then go. Oh, shoot. The hand. Oh, right hand up. Keep that one. Clear your face. Yeah, whatever. And then attach to your head. I know it is. to the front of your head. Too. There you go. Alright, good. Good, let's see your uh, push elbow. It's called Tuck Mala. Good. 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 Let's see your push elbow. Right side. Alright. Alright, light kick then. Push elbow. Yes. Good, nice push elbow, man. Okay. Good. Um, I can do it on this side too. That one would be like a spear, that one's a push. You guys got good elbows though, good job. Thank you. But right. don't, don't, you need to work on this one, one. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. That's good, just need uh, my foundation. Right? My base because now good. this side's loaded. So initially, you've already broken their gap, yeah, okay. and then you've already set yourself up for upcoming. More accuracy. Fall on. Right? So keep it <laughs> still guarded. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, right, I'm going to go on. But see how you saw your slow down? Lean that way? I was hit with the tricep. Face in line. So meet him this way. That spear, right? I am bladed, yes, but I'm so close that he can't get me from anywhere. Right? So typically when I go that spear, I follow up. So what I like to do, right? I come in and spear, and then I, I, I do what's called guard stripping. So as I as I bring this down, I turn my hand out, and I pull your guard down, and I come across. And then I'll bring another one across. And then I'll take it down, and I'll just find out what I want to do from this. So momentary good, but not for the primary stance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, boom, bring the fuck yeah, so, well, so think of how you have it, right? So rather than stripping this way, boom, your guard should be coming down. So it should be here. Boom. <laughs> and it's a, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a small little circle because it strips only enough to remove the hand from his face so that I can land my second one and then it comes back up to my face. The left one, so it goes here. So let my right one out. Beautiful. I was going to add up a little bit of the space between the bicep and the floor. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yes. Jump. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> 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 Like you got that like like say she's like coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Try to get side push. Target. 
Yeah. Open up that bicep and uh, forearm. So not so not so tight. Remember the elbow needs to roll forward. Yeah, so I need some support. Better. Very tucky. So remember, you guys are close quarters, so keep that, keep a high guard. Here, don't start getting lazy and starting like, oh, flaring out. Here. Keep that shit tight. Good, all right, good job guys. Time, that's pretty much it for today. We went a couple minutes over. Thank you guys for staying. Um, thank you guys for your service and allowing us to come here and do this. It's awesome. Um, I hope that it serves you, um, whether it's whether it's uh, in the military, outside the military. Right now, I know things are kind of crazy in the world, man. So um, I think it's definitely important to, for, for you guys to stay training. Um, I myself do weapons training as far as with knives because I carry knives with firearms because I carry firearms and then I do Muay Thai So uh, it's good that you guys are all doing this and you guys are able to protect yourselves and the ones that you care about So again, thank you guys. Um, if you guys would like to stay um, I'll be happy to like move around and just play spar with you guys. Just move around super light like playful nothing crazy um, uh, And if not, thank you guys again for coming Thank you. So make yourself as dangerous as possible, man. That's it. Uh, there's a whole lot to it, especially when we talk about clinch, like close range stuff. Like I'm sure you guys are used to grappling and then submission stuff, like jujitsu and stuff. But the clinch in Muay Thai is a different beast. Like as far as like when you're when someone's holding you, just kneeing the shit out of you. you know? They holding you and they're smashing elbows into your face, kneeing you, and then they throw you on the floor. Obviously in Muay Thai we can't strike when you're on the floor. So as soon as they hit the ground, we let them back up and we proceed. But for what you guys do, you throw them on the ground, beat the shit out of them. Yeah, keep on going. Yeah. Finish. Yeah, go to finish. Well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where's, uh, where's your gym at? In Covina. Where's that? So it's about 30 minutes east of uh, Los Angeles. Okay, nice. Yeah. So if you're ever, if you guys are ever, yeah, if you guys are ever in Covina, please come through. You guys are all welcome to the gym. It's called Fusion Muay Thai. We're partnered with uh, 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu in Covina. So you guys are all more than welcome. Please just stop by. Say that you know uh, Coach Julian or Coach Rob. So if you guys are ever over there, come through. So thank you. Thank you guys. Dude, a lot of fun. Uh, really cool experience and you know hopefully that it uh, can be useful for them i think that definitely the the curriculum that we taught today was primarily for what i think would be most applicable to close quarters combat and uh if they're in the field and they get stripped of weapons definitely stuff that's useful so had a blast doing it so hopefully we can come back and do some more